Opiu yaide, opiu yaide, opiu yaide, luka ma. Truth was sitting at the edge of the village next to the forest. Hungry, naked, cold. You see, everyone in the village was afraid of truth's nakedness. So they shoved truth out. And truth was sitting at the end of the village next to the forest. Open you yaide, open you yaide, open you yaide, look at ma. And so parable was passing by, and parable saw truth sitting at the end of the village next to the forest, and parable took truth in. And parable clothed truth with his story. Gave food, uh, gave food to truth and let truth back into the village. And when truth got into the village, this time, mm -mm, truth did not even need to knock on the doors. In fact, they invited truth in. Because truth was now dressed in history. Open you yaide, open you yaide, open you yaide, look ma. This evening I am not going to tell you truth. It's too naked. I am going to clothe truth in story for you. But I'm not here to entertain you. We're all going to do it together in the African style. <laughs> and I'm sure almost all of you here must have been to Africa one way or the other. And you know how we do it there. It's all communal. So, open you yaide, open you yaide. And your answer is, open you yaide, look ama. Open you yaide, open you yaide. Lukama, I say, open you yaide, open you yaide, open you yaide, Lukama. It simply means open your eyes and look at what's in front of you, okay? It's Creole for those of you who may have been to Sierra Leone. Well, and when I say in, you give me out. In. In. I say in. I say in. Open you yaide, open you yaide. Well, in this town, there was a law, a simple law, very simple law, nothing complicated, a simple law. There was a forest. In this forest, there was a law, no one, no one should go in that forest and poop. That was the law. How difficult can it be? Simple. Don't go in that forest. If even you feel like farting, don't pass by there. You might just cause a little mishap. So don't go there. It was the rule. It was the law for years. Well, came this gentleman who lived in the village for some time, had been out and about, and everyone came. Whoa, what's this thing all about? You know, I mean, right? You know, somebody, you know, people, what, what are you talking about? You know, I mean, right? You know, I mean, what's the problem with that? It is biodegradable. What's your problem? <laughs> this is the only trouble with these people living in here, you know, superstition and all that kind of thing. Who do they think they are? Stevie Wonder or what? superstition and all that kind of thing. What is this? You know something? Look here, you know, and I'll carry on my, my regular business. Well, so time passed by. He carried on his regular business. Everything went on along. And one particular day, he's passing by. And all of a sudden, the stomach went bogolog, 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 bogolog. And he thought, oh, goodness gracious me. What have I just had? Plenty of ground nuts or what, you know? As he's going by, next thing you know, he was by the forest. Ah, what the point? Biodegradable. Mm, inside the forest. And he sat down. Mm. He finished now. Oh, there's no toilet paper. Ah, cha. He grabbed a leaf. He wanted to put the leaf. The leaf refused to touch his backside. What is this? There's a tree. Okay, I might as well get it on the tree. 
thorns came out of the tree. Hmm, what is this? He thought, okay. Next thing you know, the flies are now coming. Whoa, around his head. He's thinking, what do I do right now? Okay, all right, no problem. You know what? I'm a, I might as well just put on my trousers, just get out of here. Put on his trousers, the trousers refuse to cover his backside. Mm, what is this now? All right, and the flies are going, whoa, the leaf is refusing, the tree is coming out of thorn. Mm, what do I do right now? Well, you know what? Okay, I'll bear the shame, I'll walk up like this and get out of this place. It's getting dark. As he got up to go, the poop got up. You're you leaving me here, I'm coming with you. <laughs> <laughs> open you, yai day, open you, yai day. I say, open your eyes, open your eyes, open your eyes, look at me. When I say to you, I want to tell you a story, you tell me, oh, get on with it. I want to tell you a story. I said, I want to tell you a story. I say, in I say, in Open you, yai day. Open you, yai day. There was a woman, an old woman. And this woman, she had the most beautiful garden. I mean the most wonderful garden. Think of the most tongue-tanging mango it was growing in her garden. Think of the most delicious, wonderful potato it was growing in her garden. Everything was so lovely in her garden, but there was a problem. There was a problem. There was one tiny little mouse that could not keep its tiny little legs off this lady's garden. Every single day, this mouse will sneak into the lady's garden, will nibble on the yam, nibble on the cocoa, nibble on the potato, nibble on this, nibble on that, nibble on the ogbono, nibble on this, nibble on that. Hey! The lady got fed up and said, enough is enough. I am going to put a trap in the garden. But as she was putting the trap, mouse was passing by. When mouse saw the lady, Well, you all know, Mouse, they're very smart. And so Mouse went off to meet his three best friends to help him get rid of the trap. Off Mouse went to his first best friend, Cow. Hello, Cow! Hello, Cow! Hello, Cow! Yeah, what? <laughs> Hello, Cow! Cow, there's a problem! There's a really big problem! There's a trap in the garden! Please help me get rid of the trap! Or else tell me big trouble here! Okay, let me tell you, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, look here. You see something? Mouse. You know, it's none of my business, you know what I mean? Uh, it's none of my business, you know what I mean? So let me tell you straight up front, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you see my neck, you see how big it is? It will never be caught in that trap, you know what I mean, right? So please go sort out your own problem, okay, you know what I mean? Cow would not help. Mouse was hungry. He dashed up to his next best friend, Goat. Hello, Goat. Hello, Goat. There's a problem. There's a really big problem. There's a trap in the garden. What? 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 There's a trap. Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you right now. Let me tell you. Look, it's not my business. Let me tell you right now. It's not my business. Okay. Let me tell you right now. Okay. Look, you see, because I eat grass. You understand? I eat grass out there. It's not my business. You see how big my neck is? It will never become that trap. No, I mean right. Goat would not help neither. Mouse was so hungry, his stomach was now touching his spine. Mouse could barely crawl to his next best friend, Chicken. Hello, Chicken. Hello, Chicken. Hello, Chicken. There's a problem. There's a problem. Let me tell you right now. Look, look, I fly. You understand? I fly. I fly. You understand that? Wherever I I fly. You understand me? For as long as the lady eats rice, my life is fine. Okay? It's your problem. Please don't give me. Don't trouble me for one moment. Okay? Chicken would not say in. I said, I want to tell you a story. And so, and so, and so, chicken wouldn't help. Mouse was hungry. Time.
passed by. As time passed by, people came from all over the world. And I'm just wondering where the many countries people have come from, from right now here. Anybody here from India? Ah, okay. Satsrikal. Or is it Namaste? <laughs> all right. And we are from Nigeria. Uh -huh. Where else? Where else? Where else? Just shout out the countries. Be proud of them. Just shout them out. Pakistan. From Pakistan. Ah, Shalom Alaikum. All right. Where else? Where else? South Africa? Germany? Sweden? All right. Germany over there? Guten Tag? All right. France? Sweden? Sweden? Iceland! I'm lost for that one. <laughs> but tell me then, how do we say hello in Iceland? Let me learn that one. I, I, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming there. <laughs> I want to learn Iceland. How do we say hello in Iceland, in Icelandish? <laughs> you just make my life difficult. <laughs> one more time. Satu, Satu, Sat, O Blesser. Oh, what a fantastic way to greet. Wow. Sat, O Blesser, of course, from Senegal. Nagadev. <laughs> and as time passed by, Cobra the snake was hungry. Cobra had heard that mouse usually hangs out in the garden. And worse of it, mouse is vulnerable. And Cobra, best time. And Cobra was sliding and sliding his way through the garden. Cobra did not see the trap. The trap caught hold of Cobra. And Cobra lay down there, oh God, this is so damn painful. Ah. I'm not going to lay down here and pretend to be dead. Ah. And so Cobra lay down pretending to be dead. The fruits and the vegetables were all nice. They were growing so wonderful. Everything looked superb. The lady came out to get some food to go and prepare. So, um, came out to get some fruit and vegetables to go and prepare food for her ten sons and ten daughters. Yes. <laughs> Ebola has taken some. We need to bring some more. Ten sons and ten daughters. And as she came, she was going through the garden. She did not see the cobra. She stepped on cobra. <coughs> cobra bit the lady. Put so much poison, the lady fell down and died instantly. Ikubola <laughs> jeo. Death has come. And for a lady like this, I don't know how you do it in Dublin, no. But back there, where this lady had just died, eh? With ten sons, ten daughters, eh? What a part, what a funeral. I mean, everybody came. Those who came to Chichichata, there they are. Those who came to cry and moan, there they are. Those who came to lie and gossip. Those who came to Chichichata, they ate and they drank. More people were coming. In fact, some people came all the way from India. You know what they were doing? Yeah, 
सपने दिखाए अब तो मेरा दिल जाके न सोता है किया कर कुछ कुछ होता है किया कर है कुछ कुछ होता है ये दोस्ते हमने ही छोड़ छोड़ेंगे हम बगर तेरे साथ ना छोड़ेंगे What a funeral! <laughs> they gathered together. They ate. They drank. They ate. They drank. The food finished. More people were coming. Eh? They came and they thought, "Well, how are we going to feed all these many people now that are coming?" Somebody came out. Wait a minute. The lady, she's got a cow. And they went back around, grabbed hold of cow, boof to the ground. As they put the knife, sorry vegetarians, out came, <laughs> out came mouse. You see? You see cow? You see what I was telling you? It is the trap that caught the snake that bit the lady. She is dead. Now you two are going to her. Open you yide, open you yide, open you yide, come on. Open you yide, open you yide, open you yide, come on. Open you yide, come on. Again, I don't know how you do it here in Dublin, no. But back there, where this lady had just died, eh? Forty days after, they gathered again together. More people came. Those who came to Chichitata, there they are. Those who came to lie and moan. Those who came to cry and gossip. Those who came to eat and drink. They ate and they drank. They ate and they drank. Eh? More people were coming. And by, by this time, they were even going like this. Last night I heard my mama singing a song. Oh, hey, chop the chop the chip chip. Woke up this morning and my mama was born. Oh, hey, chop the chop the chip chip chop the chop the chip chip chop. Let me hear you now. Where's your mama gone? Where's your baby gone? Where's your baby gone? Where's your mama gone? Where's your mama? Papa, away. Thank you. And so they ate and they drank the food finished. Everything finished. Pata pata. And they're thinking now, hey, what are we going to do now? How are we going to feed all these many people? Oh, somebody, wait a minute. The lady, she's got a goat. They grabbed hold of goats, moved to the ground as they put the knife. Sorry, vegetarians. Out came mouse. You see? You see, goat? You see what I was telling you? It is the trap that caught the... That beat the... She is. Cow is. You two are going to... Open you, yide. Open you, yide. Open you, yide. Look how far. Open you, yide. Open you, yide. Open you, yide. Look how far. I say, enough. Everybody finished and they were now sitting down like, hey. <laughs> I wonder who's going to drop next. <laughs> oh, that was the most delicious good kebab. <laughs> good kan kan kan. <laughs> it was while they were doing that when one relative who had, um, he, he arrived late, very late because where he was, he was, his papers were not correct. So it took time. <laughs> For him to arrive. When he finally arrived, they saw him. They said, Hey, this relative who had not been here, please let us go and call Tion Sek for him. Please let us go and call all the people from Senegal to come in. Jinle, Jinle. Hey, go on, I'll finish it now. <laughs> <laughs> and so this relative came and they thought how are we going to feed this relative now 
they grabbed hold of chicken, moved to the ground. As they put the knife, sorry, vegetarians, out came out. You see? You see, chicken? You see what I was telling you? It is the trap that caught the. That beat the. She is. Cow is. Goat is. You are going to. Hope you yide. Hope you yide. You see, Bob Marley said, <laughs> When the rain falls, it won't fall on one man's doorstep. It is all our responsibility. But then people ask me all the time, they said, Cow Prince, which is my stage name. They said, Cow Prince, you see Fujalo, whatever happened to Mouse? Whatever happened to Mouse at the garden? Well, I tell them this. I said, every day, Mouse will just chill underneath a palm tree, nibble on a bit of yam, on a bit of carrot, on a bit of potato, sip on a bit of palm wine. And Mouse will sing this song. Don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be yours. Oh, don't worry. Singing, don't worry. Uh huh. About a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be yours. Come on, I wanna hear everybody. Come on. Singing, don't worry. One more time. About a thing. Every little thing is gonna be alright. Let's take the verse. Rise up this morning. Smile at the rising sun. Three little birds beside my doorstep. Singing sweet songs. A melody pure and true. They were singing. This is my to you. Who singing? Don't worry. Thing. Cause every little thing Every little thing is indeed <laughs> going to be all right. You know why? Because there are people like you. There are people like you who are here in Dublin, flown from so many other countries around the world. You are here to work out how it's going to be all right. You are here to make sure it is all right. That's a fantastic responsibility to have. It's a fantastic zeal to pursue, a laudable aim. Give yourself a big round of applause for that. <laughs> I, I know <clears throat> you, I don't know how many of you have heard storytelling in this kind of format before. <laughs> but if you haven't, don't blame me. <laughs> blame <Dr. Tom. laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just before I go, of course, I've got a few leaflets here. If you do want to take it, you can. Um, I do work right across the world in many, many different settings like these, schools, you name it all. But for me, it's about using storytelling as a tool, an effective tool to communicate to all the different cultures that we find ourselves in. And as doctors, um, medical practi pra practitioners, you, your middle name is Flex. <laughs> I say your medium is flex because you encounter so many different cultures, so many different types of people, and therefore you are going to have to be flexible in your approach to all these different cultures and people that you do meet. And when I work with corporate organizations, one of the things I talk, talk to them about is about effective communication. And can somebody tell me, what's the most effective tool? You hear the word. What's the most effective tool to communicate? <laughs> <laughs> humor. 
Humor. Okay, humor. Mm -hmm. A story. Excuse me, please. I shouldn't have taken this thing, man. <laughs> a story. Yes. Mm, yes. This will probably. Thank you. Listening. The ears. Because without that, you as doctors, you will not operate. Because the moment a patient comes to you, you ask them. In, you know, you're, asking, you're asking their permission for you to listen to them. For them to tell you their story. So without a narrative, forget about it. You know, the first story, you know, um, it was a story myself and Dr. Donald really had a debate, should we, should we not? Oh, it's got poop in it, go poop, oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we should have thought, you're doctors, you deal with all sorts of stuff every day. <laughs> but, um, but, <laughs> but that first story may seem just as plain and ordinary, but you take out the layers. It's about building trust. It's about building effective communication with the, com the communities that we work with. Now I'm from Sierra Leone, and I know that when the Ebola broke out in Sierra Leone, it was disaster as much as in Liberia and so on, because communication had broken um, totally finished, non-existence between the provinces, people in the provinces, and the main ruling government right there in Freetown. There was no more, no more trust. In fact, that has prompted me to um, developing some series of talks at the moment that I call Trust Your Way to Success. And it's geared for Sierra Leone, but still applicable everywhere. And I'm going to be using storytelling just to get people to understand where did we break trust. So I think <clears throat> when I look at what's happened there, and then of course, as you know now, the response from the international court, everybody is going into the country to go and work. But a lot of things were not in place for you guys to do any kind of effective work there. Definitely not initially. We didn't have carpenters to build the kind of facilities you need. Drainages were terrible. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Because communication had broken down. Why? Because those big dudes in government there think they can just go and poop in the forest and it won't follow them. Because that's what they think. Those of you from Africa, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Our big guys they will do whatever they can and just think, ignore the province, ignore them. Don't build the roads. That's pooping in the forest when you don't build the effective roads. You don't educate the grassroots. That's pooping in the forest because they need to go to the farm to produce food for you in the city. When you guys go in there to work in all those places, <clears throat> you need good houses to stay in. If you don't have qualified carpenters, good builders and so on, you stay in a hut and leave it to the mosquitoes. But then it comes down to what we're also, what you as medical practitioner, practitioners are doing. Now, of course, I'm not a doctor, but come to me, I'll heal you with my stories. <laughs> now, as medical practitioners, when you go into those places <clears throat> to work with those, um, with those people, you then have a massive responsibility just to understand their own narratives. What's their superstitions? How do you work with those superstitions? So that you can work effectively with them. My grandma always says, tickle them. When their mouth is open with laughter, you pour in the truth. <laughs> Yeah, um, but <clears throat> part of my work here today with you is to share my stories with you. The traditional stories which I heard from my village. But having lived abroad for so long and I, I train as an actor, I'm able to take these stories so that I can make them relevant to you. So when you come into our own communities, hopefully you can begin to make use of the narratives that they give to you and figure out how you can use them to work effectively for their benefit and also for your own benefit.